everyone, my name's Gus Segolovich. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about the democratisation of housing. And in a way, this is my, my way of, of solving the UK's housing crisis. Why do we think there's a housing crisis? Well, um, I think we all, we've seen it on the news and stuff, but, but maybe the fundamental problems are that big house builders have local monopolies, and that has a whole ramification of issues. And ultimately, it's about putting too much power with what I call a misalignment of incentives. Because the volume house builders are there to serve their shareholders and not the interests of the consumer. And they get away with this because of the local monopolies. So, we all know, we've seen these plenty of pictures of poor quality design, poor quality building. There were, for example, studies by CAVE uh, that says only 18% of new built houses are good or very good. This is a study by NHBC that says 250,000 defects in the last five years were detected in new built, new built housing. We're not building good enough quality or good enough design. But it's not only that, but because the, the interest of the house builders is to get these up and get these away, and they don't really, the customer doesn't have much choice, there's no real reason to, to, to go beyond the minimum. In space, we've got the smallest houses in Europe, in energy efficiency. They're forced to do these things through standards, but they're not doing it because they think they're going to get a better consumer, because the consumer's not, basically doesn't have any choice. So there's no reason these house builders are going to put energy efficient housing up because they're not going to be the ones benefiting from the bills. So overall, it's not a very good, uh, not a very good landscape. I think for me, the, one of the most important things, though, is that they actually don't deliver. Um, and so even though the house builders sit on a huge amount of land, and at this very moment, we should be building 250,000 homes a year. We're about 110, 120. They're actually sitting on 600,000 unbuilt planning permissions, because for whatever reason. But that doesn't actually help us, the consumer, the people who want good houses. What it does, it does help them. Well, help them for a little bit. It helps them with their house prices as they go up like that, until there comes a point where it becomes unsustainable. So, I think uh, there's a problem here, and I've come to you with a suggestion of how we can look at things differently. So, my solution is about democratisation of housing. You might be scratching your head and say, what, 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 what on earth does he mean by that? Well, let me give you an analogue to some other industries. This is a simple graph. It, it, the idea is, is to portray the kind of concentration of power with the delivery mechanisms in terms of numbers of actual delivery. So here, you'll recognize some sort of brand names. This is to represent different industries. So you've got the newspaper industry, you've got the hotel industry, the uh, media industry, banking and, and, and um, record industry. In the olden days, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you went, to the news, you went and bought a newspaper to get your news. You, you, you went to the Hilton to get a hotel room. You went to Barclays to get your funding. Sky would provide you with your football or whatever, and, and, and HMV would provide you with a, a, a record of which you'd really only want one track. And this is what's happened. This is as a result of Web 2.0, and this is about the democratization of those industries. So when you used to have to buy an entire album, Napster came along and meant you could only pick out one, the ones that you wanted. Not the ones that they forced you to buy, the ones you wanted. Twitter came along. You don't have to have the news that somebody else is, is editing for you. It's about the news that you go out and search for, and it's about what, what people on the ground are talking about. YouTube, we all know, again, it's about delivery of content. Airbnb is a hotel concept. This is about people renting out their own rooms. It's a democratization of the hotel process. And Kickstarter, again, is about funding. So rather than having to go to a bank, you can go to many people around the room. So let's bring this back to housing. In housing, you can see here that actually, not just these people, but effectively the, very, the big major house builders represent about 
60,000 homes a year. That's about half the market. That is a concentration. What I'd like to see is self-builders. Self-builders at the moment don't have much power, and they produce about 11 or 12,000 homes a year. This is where I want us to get to. I want self-builders to be producing 100,000 homes a year. So, why, why do I want this? Let's go... Uh, oh, so uh, here, actually, I, before I mention that, I want to say this isn't just pie-in-the-sky thinking. This is saying, look at these other countries. We are the bottom end of self-build delivery. We produce about 10 or 11 percent of our housing stock through self-build. Germany, Austria, 60, 80 percent. So this is not undoable. This is being done around the world. But why is it important? Well, first of all, in my mind, it realigns those incentives that I was talking about. So actually, when you're building your own home, you want it to be energy efficient. You want it to be big, because actually that, you're going to live there. You, want, you are prepared to put more things in it. But, but one of the big, big reasons is this. It actually ensures consistent delivery. You can see here, this is a speculative, this is total number of homes. And you can see, as things get bad, just house builders stop building. Self-builders carry on. And that's what, that is a way to keep recession-proof. So the other thing to do is, you might remember this graph from before, this is the UK, 10% of self-builders. This is Germany, 60% of self-builders. By allowing people, by democratizing that housing process, you allow people to basically not speculate on that. And that helps the housing price, and it keeps the economy much more stable. These are some of the benefits. Um, oh, sorry. Passive housing, this is basically the idea that, that, that in Germany you've got hundreds of thousands of, of passive houses throughout Europe. In England, 52. This is about people's direct link of quality of life to good design. That's a study to sort of the green is showing basically the quality of life of, of community um, uh, self-builds. And, and this is saying that actually the studies show that when people have spare money, in their building their own home. It doesn't go into their pocket, it goes into their home. And that creates longer lasting legacies, better quality, and better quality for you know, more than one generation. How do we achieve this? So, this is a whole load of stuff which I probably don't have time to go through. But in basic terms, here are the, here are the sort of top five I want to go through. Number one, volume house builders can go to public land authorities and say, I want that piece of land, but I'm not going to pay you for it now. Self-builders have no such luck. Volume house builders pay on average £50,000 a plot. Self-builders pay £80,000. This has got to stop. Banks are prepared to lend to house builders in various ways and various conditions, but in terms of self-builders, it's got to be a detached home. They're very stringent. There are very, very few lenders out there. Again, self-builders need financial support. Local authorities look at best price. It's not about best price. It's not about how much money they can get in the coffers day one. Because if they charge too much for the land, that land gets retraded and retraded. And, and these, you get these 600,000 planning permissions unbuilt. So what you need to think about is value. How can we actually get best value to the, to the, to the community? And that's by allowing um, self-builders to build out their own homes. Council zone, this would be a massive one. This would be my top of all of them. Basically, uh, taking out the risk of planning and, and putting that in and, and, and allowing effectively what they do in Germany and Austria, which is saying, okay, in this plot, we can allow a uh, uh, 100 square meter home. Rather than a trader making that call and getting the benefit of the uplift in planning, you let the council make that call. The council benefits from a, a, a slightly higher, um, they get a better return, and, and, the, and, the, and the custom builder or the self builder also benefits. Finally, I think that actually you're going to have to do this with some sort of regulation. You're going to actually have to force local authorities to say, we can't just give all of our land to, 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 to volume house builds. We have to allow some to the custom builders or the self builders. And that's from Einstein. And I think it says it all. And I think that's what I'd like to end on. Thank you.